Music is the highest form of art and culture that epitomizes the values and tastes of people. It reflects the here and now and is also a recaller of memories and shapes our future. In my earlier books, four of them, uh, I spoke of the theoretical and practical aspects of my research and its use for humanity. The appreciation of music is beyond the text, the artist, the audience, the gender and the personal pressures. The musical tastes withstand the test of time in people, especially in those who follow it with great involvement. The interaction of life and music is the same as that of life and literature, arts and culture. There are hidden meanings in the interaction of music and life, which keeps us healthy throughout the life, not only mentally and physically, but also intellectually and spiritually. My research explored the merits of perspectives that relate music consciousness of music, the music producer, the singer, the music practices and the methods that produce a marked effect on society and on group audience and on individual listeners and how it could produce a therapeutic or healing effect in those people. Therefore, the research is aligned to an ethnographic study in media studies of the audience and touches the realm of ethnomusicology also. But it does not stop there. The research had focused on the tales, on narratives, on performances and how all these affected the everyday life and health of people. Narratives on music tales and at different time spans and on performances of a single individual with substantiated embedded narratives in family contexts, domestic and professional music experience, the facilitation of such experiences on a musician's performance, etc. are very rare in literature. For that matter, the narratives are radically contextualized, contextualized <laughs> in peer group context. The, the, in relation to the tastes and beams of the music repertoires and never attempts an audience research. Somehow it happens that people doesn't do an audience research. But mine actually included such audience research and client research too. Those people who are not patients and those who are patients, both. That's the audience, no? I had started to write poems and create my own lullabies even at the age of eight. And I loved music even before that. According to Aries P in 1962 in the book Centuries of Childhood, A Social History of Family Life, published in London, in that, a child's independence and independent creativity starts at the age of seven. And I have been analyzing the first unconsciously and then consciously I have been analyzing my musicality all through these years. At present I am 75. When I wrote this fifth book, I was 65. So these are things which I am speaking from the from a book which I wrote at 65 years. So that the sojourn is a prolonged one, almost as long as my chronological life cycle. Now, this research, this, the book, this book is based on my research, which is structured to certain things. Number one, analyze the music culture and subcultures from an interactive and methodological view of a single prototype performer and his numerous fans. So audience also included, not the singer alone. To, to apply sociological, cultural theories to everyday, everyday life of young and old people alike. 
in a musical environment. So, no age or gender discrimination. Three, historical context of exploring data of mass musical activity among Indian youth from 1946-47 to 2011 when this book was written. Two, four, that is the fourth, this is to contextualize a local site, that is Kerala, as a prototype musical history and select one singer from the who has stood the test of time for over 50 years from 1961 to 12, 20, uh, 2012 was taken and how the musical culture of the area was influenced by this one singer and still continues to influence, influence it these things these are all these things are involved in my this fifth book Mm -hmm. And fifth, the model of the singer for indicating the relation between the private and public conscious, consciousness as well as a local and global production practice of commercial music. And sixth, that is this particular book which was in the fifth series of music therapy. This is also designed as an integrative tool for arts and sciences and for use as a handbook in guidance and book of guidance for faculty training in music therapy. In cultural practice, especially in music, there is a concept of propriety to be judged by society. That means every singer is aware of what to say and do, how to say and do and engaging in teleo-affective selections such as emotion, taste, methods using or methods during something saying or uh, performing or doing etc. For a singer saying and doing is mainly related to, related to music performance only that is singing and performing only. The difference of the practice depends on how the consumer that is the audience, the music lovers and the producer, that is the performer singer, and their practices affect changes in each other. Only if there is a change happening in each other, becomes it is you can say that it is influencing the other. No? That also for the betterment of the discipline. This <clears throat> change is not for personal, but for betterment of the discipline of music, for the betterment of the society. Here, the betterment of the music by the musician is not my concern. But the met betterment of an audience like me to use it, to use music as a therapeutic tool is my part, the audience part. So these are the things that I have been considering. Now, how is the music in its initial phases of commodi commodification influenced? and is influenced by the audience. That is also a part of the research.